As I stated in the introduction, those requested that we include the Osirian at Abydos, the temple complex there, in this video series on the path of Horus. It was not originally included in the actual sacred journey, but given the Osiris Arising project and all that has developed now for the planet and in regard to my receipt of this information, he wished that this be included. So we're doing this part a little differently. Now, Abydos is the Greek name for the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian Abdu, A-B-D-U. According to Ancient Aliens Press, the Abdu Temple complex contains seven shrines dedicated to seven gods, Osiris, Isis, Horus, Amun-Ra, Ra, Horkati, and Ta. And Seti the first as a deified king. In this temple, one will find the best preserved painted reliefs and texts from the 18th dynasty. Well, according to Thoth, Seti the first really didn't um, set him up himself up as a deified king in this sense. He was working with ancient text and inner vision guidance to create this SETI complex that was over the Assyrian. The Assyrian was built much earlier than that, but he was being guided to do this. He didn't have all the pieces of understanding, but he was doing what he felt was the right thing for him in his kingly state to do for his people in the perpetuation of their world, um, their planetary sphere of, of experience. So much of the Temple of Seti complex that's built over the Assyrian is really a very valid text of ancient, far more ancient uh, knowledge and perception, but it, it lacks the key to understanding the greater function. It's sort of skimming the surface of that, trying to piece it together. The Assyrian, however, um, which is located beneath the rear end of the Seti Temple and is much, much older. This, according to my Thothic Akashic record insights, is um, very much like the Giza pyramid complex in that it is a working energy system intended to be a conduit between Earth and specific star systems, most especially the constellation of Orion. Now, we know that all these ancient temples, almost all of them at least, had some referencing to the stellar alignments and coordinates, but certain ones that were very, very ancient, like the Assyrian and the pyramids of Giza, were actual engines, dynamic engines. And of course, the Assyrian is, is kind of a wreck now. You look at it in the, um, you know, the, the images of it, it's, it's all crumbled and a, a lot of the parts are missing and whatever. It's even in worse shape than the pyramids of Giza. But there's more to it beneath what you see that's still operative. And that's the same thing, of course, for the pyramids. The Osirian anchor was the Nidaru Enead, the nine gods or solar lords who brought the nine creational pillars of fire to earth. Thoth speaks of these pillars as quantum force fields that keep this planet in alignment with its sourcing platform in Orion. Without these pillars in place, the many geomagnetic zones of Earth would collide force fields, destroying the planet. Now this is a large topic, and um, I've actually never written about it because it's new news to me. 
and I do plan to explore more more in the future with both in more detail. But for the purpose of this Path of Horus topic, let us see the Osirian as a grounding device for the nine beings and powers they bring to Earth. The Flower of Life is etched in several places within the Osirian uh, temple complex. And the Flower of Life essentially indicates that this temple was an energy system that recognized and adjusted the full potential of the incarnated soul. As I said before, this is a, a actual scientific process that happens to the body when it enters a certain force field. But if one is not ready for the very subtle emanations of this field, despite the powerful results, they simply will not experience it, or not to any degree that would be noticeable to them. As an initiate, you stand before the Osirian, which bears the flower of life inscription within it. This is your personal sourcing platform that establishes the baseline of all your soul interaction through incarnation in this earth. And it is being upgraded as you walk into the Osirian. It is indeed a gigantic computer in stone that can calculate your potential through DNA sequencing and reformulate the mix of your amino acids in the body to match this soul sourcing potential that is registered in your higher energy bodies. Now, obviously every tourist who walks into the Assyrian does not receive this blast from the past. It is a process triggered in degrees that match your level of innate awareness. If you are ready, so you shall receive. In conclusion to the topic of the Assyrian, I would like to share with you something I wrote some years ago. This first part was written around 1995. Um, it's a, both a transmission to me. When blood mixes in the various strains, types, and race factors as a result of karmic selection, so the blood consciousness becomes diluted in its ancestral strength. It does not embrace future patterns, but largely in an oratronic half-light or incomplete geometry. However, when these same strains, types, and race consciousness mix according to true metatronic or full light entrainment, new and more finely resolved forms of the DNA geometry are created which maintain the ancestral memory and yet evolve it to a higher graduation upon the spiral of creation. How does one enter the ancestral flow of the Metatron rather than the Oratron? Through living sacred presence as a heart-centered reality. Now I'd like to interrupt that just for a moment what I'm reading you, because I want to make it clear that Thoth is not speaking here of genetic breeding. You know, uh, you have to marry this person rather than that one to get this pure race or something. That's not at all what he's talking about. He's saying that we are guided, when we're guided through our heart-centered consciousness, to connect 
our energy systems to other energy systems then we find ourselves in the metatronic flow rather than the oratronic this is not factoring in that sometimes you need to, to you know have a child by someone and the, the um the relationship seems a disaster it's, it's hurtful and you know if you're torn to pieces by it maybe the other partner is as well and this child comes out of the relationship and uh there's a real reason for that child to be in life at that time and the two of you came together for that reason but you see those things wouldn't be happening if we'd gotten it right the first time <laughs> if we'd worked on it from the beginning to create non-karmic relationships marriages intercourse um birthings that were not karmically but dharmically related so there has to, sometimes now there are adjustments that come in that make two people suffer so they can have a child that needs to be born in the world that's that's a, a band-aid situation if we live through sacred presence as a heart-centered reality that doesn't happen we're drawn to the right person for the right reasons all the time and we're not just talking about having children we're talking about a lot of other things too that come into play in our lives that create dna um mutations in the body so that's what he's speaking about now let me continue the basis of the yohanin consciousness which is to know comes from this cohesion of old form with new resolution this presence constitutes the awakened ones further one need not be reincarnated into the right mixture of genetic codes in order to emancipate the presence in the blood all human beings contain a seed of this effluent solvent in their life giving blood it can be quickened immaculately as an ovum in the womb to reconstitute into full-blown metatronic geometry now how amazing is that okay to continue those who are incarnated in a physical vessel which contains the complete codes relative to their planet's current evolution may activate the presence not only in their body and blood but is a pathing for the quickening in others. Jesus Christ was the ultimate awakener in this sense. He said, "Do this in remembrance of me." The true meaning of which was to transfer his blood geometry into the fallen spectrum of humanity through the direct ritual of communion. This sacred act also perpetuated the sacred solvent through one's quickened blood vibration by expanding the immaculate light within that individual's blood into the auric fields of other individuals allowing them the opportunity to embrace the holy within their blood and cells through this transfer. Now again, I need to clarify. Both is not suggesting we all run to a Catholic church and get communion. What he's saying is that the actual original format format that Jesus at the last supper when he held up the cup and it wasn't a gold cup it was a simple little cup and said these words he was speaking of receiving that communion in many ways through life including the one that's been set up now is the holy communion in the catholic church but only only if you truly are in heart coherence when you do it and you understand on some level of being what you're receiving you don't have to understand it mentally and intellectually but i mean within the cells you go to church and you have this holy communion you take the eucharist and you think of jesus and then you leave the church no that's not what it's all about he's speaking of something much much deeper than that and yes you can receive it certainly during the catholic holy communion if that is where your heart center is but you can receive it in a lot of different ways that's outside the boundaries of religion to continue reading this is a more recent part that was written but still several years ago the i you me i you me pattern in the blood that's 
capital I, apostrophe, capital U, M, I. Thoth has shown me how each pattern of six petals in the flower of life is energetically aligned to a six-headed pyramid bubble. The six flower bubbles create a combined harmonic that is the same as the tone harmonic of divine man, Adam Kadmon. The platelets in the human body, the human blood, conform to the flower of life pattern when the blood is transferred into a ether. This a ether blood is still blood, as it performs a similar function in the refined body, this body being of a high frequency light vibration. However, the flower of life is only one frozen moment in the messages of the blood as it moves into greater and greater parity with source. Thoth calls these aether blood patterns or blood language Aimui, Aimui. The flower of life pattern is the first complete harmonic. From it are spun Aimui patterns ad finitum. Yet it is through the door of the flower of life that the infinite Aimui is accessed. The Aimui or ether blood streams the language of light into the corporeal. One need not have their blood transformed to an ether in order to receive the streaming. In what we call past and future times, your soul has and will experience the refined pure gem blood within its Imui blood consciousness. It is, it, is there for, it is there for you now on your timeline to receive at any moment in the now you choose. Receiving the quickening for you to align in various degrees to your ether blood can come through sound, light, color, symbol geomet geometrics of thy Aimui patterns, even smell through aromatherapy. Now, the reason, of course, I brought this up and I'm reading this to you in the context of the Syrian is that is the chamber in which people entered to receive this. But you don't need to go to the Assyrian to get it. You have the Assyrian inside of you. I have just a bit more I wish to add to the Assyrian part. And here you see the picture of Osiris with Jesus, with Yeshua. As both has said, one of the two souls of Yeshua, the one that had incarnated before, was of the same as the Assyrian soul. Other soul was the pure soul that came in to really manifest the greater dynamic of the life of Yeshua. But the Assyrian soul helped him hold the energies that were needed for his divine purpose. Uh, reading to you now from something I received in 1997. I'm just going to read a portion of this. Osiris contains the master program for the bonding of the greater star fields to the lesser through the threshold of Orion. As his projection is brought through a series of stellar apexes, so it creates the vesica, the eye of his son of sons, Horus. Here we have our path. In the central whorl, which is the eye of his sun, S-U-N, so realms are created from the core, K-O-R, and the all, A-L-M. These realms include not only star systems and biophysical forms, but realms within the heart and soul that give us solar emblems of light formation overlaid upon the zodiacal charting of the Adam Kadmon memory within the current human form. Now, we is also quoted here from the Keys of Enoch, and the Eye of Horus is defined in the Keys of Enoch by J.J. Hertog, quote, one of the manifestations of the eternal eye through which a template of vibratory patterns is used by the masters and lords of light to generate physical condition. We of the chariot of the sun, that's Thos Merkaba, including him, 
Add that the Eye of Horus also generates realm consciousness in many forms, acting as a fulcrum, expanding the codes back into the eternal Eye of God. Also again now from the Keys of Enoch about the Eternal Eye. Now here we are quoting again. The Father's Eye of Divine Creation coordinating the minds of the Elohim so that the Divine Image can pass on to all generations of creation. This Eternal Eye allows the Father's living light to make visible His garment so that it can form the light substances. Now that's the end of the quote. Now, Thoth is speaking to me about a sacred journey, and I believe this is in preparation for the Horus journey. And he states, Thus am I the Tehuti, and thus is Horus the grand archetype who lives as the son of sons. There is a fourth guardian, and it is she who is Sekhmet, the beholder, and a fifth guardian along the way, Isis, mother of life. Call upon this company of light, the immortals who reign upon the Horian way. No shadow is greater than the light they shed from one hair upon their heads. That's an interesting way to put it. No shadow is greater than the light they shed from one hair upon their heads. Call upon them for assistance with Abba Abu Ymir Habat meaning come forth from the Father, through the Son, into the sphere in which I am manifested. Also remember to call upon the Yohanine Corpus, that's the body of the, the awareness of grace within the being. And this is Iber Iber Luminous Sancta Iskamana, meaning to arise, to arise, I am sanctified in the shining mantle of the Lord of God. And I might add in Thothic remembrance, and so it is. Call upon the company of light, the immortals who reign upon the Horian way. No shadow is greater than the light they shed from one hair upon their heads. Call upon them for assistance with Abba Abu Emir Habat, meaning come forth from the Father through the Son unto the sphere in which I am manifested. Abba, Abu, Emir, Habat. Abba, Abu, Emir, Habat. Abba, Abu, Emir, Habat. Abba, Abu, Emir, Habat. Call upon the Yohanin Corpus, which is in essence the body of Christ. Eber, Eber, Luminous, Sancta, Iskamana, meaning to arise, to arise, I am sanctified in the shining mantle of the Lord God. Eber, Eber, Luminous, Sancta, Iskamana. Iber, Iber, Luminous Sancta, Iskmana. 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 